The mother of all earthquakes could be just around the corner. The New Madrid seismic zone is causing experts immense concern as absolutely devastating earthquakes have already occurred here in the past. We take a close look at when we have to prepare for the next destructive event and how violent it will be. So be sure to stay tuned until the end. Welcome friends. Let's get YouTube shaking and try to collect 500 likes for this video, then it will be shown to even more people. But now to the topic, one of the most dangerous areas on Earth is the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Never heard of it? Then it's about time, because perhaps the most violent earthquake of recent decades is brewing here. According to geologists, it's overdue. To understand just how big it could be, just take a look at the history of the New Madrid Seismic Zone. According to geologists themselves, this is one of the least understood but most seismically active regions in the United States states. It stretches across the states of Missouri, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Arkansas. At the beginning of the 19th century, the New Madrid Seismic Zone was the scene of one of the most violent series of earthquakes in world history. Between December 1811 and February 1812, residents were terrorized by not one, but three massive earthquakes. These quakes had magnitudes of around 7.0 to 7.5, a strength that has been unsurpassed in the region ever since. And these quakes were felt over a gigantic area. According to witnesses, church bells rang hundreds of kilometers from the epicenter in New England because the quakes were so violent. As I said, there were three of them. In the early morning of December 16th, 1811, the first major quake shook the region. Reports from the time describe how the ground rolled in waves, rivers reversed their course, and huge fissures opened up in the earth. The intensity of the quake was so great that it was felt in distant cities such as Boston and New York. The second quake followed on January 23, 1812, and was similarly strong as the first. Again, the effects were devastating, with further damage to the already shaken infrastructure and land. The population, which at the time was sparsely spread across the affected area, once again faced chaos and destruction. And when luck knocks twice at the door, it usually knocks a third time. The third and last major quake in this series occurred on February 7, 1812, and is considered the strongest of the three. It caused dramatic changes in the landscape, including the reversal of the course of the Mississippi River and the formation of new lakes. The town of New Madrid, which was close to the epicenter, and therefore gave the zone its name, suffered catastrophic damage. And although these were the three major quakes, there were thousands of aftershocks that continued until 1817, helping to further destabilize the region and its inhabitants. Above all, however, it also contributed to a better understanding of the geological processes in the region, and today we know why quakes occur there in the first place. It's a bit strange at first, because if we look at the tectonic plates, we can see that no plates meet here at all. And earthquake zones actually always occur where two tectonic plates meet, don't they? Actually, not always. Earthquakes can also occur within a plate. This phenomenon is called an intraplate earthquake, another fantastic word for the next round of Scrabble. Such intraplate earthquakes occur when stress builds up within the crust of a tectonic plate and eventually discharges. Earthquake researchers assume that the stresses that arise at the edges of the plate are transferred to the entire rigid plate body and thus lead to strong compression pressure in the interior. Earthquakes occur when there are geological weak points that give way to this pressure. And such points can be old fractures or former plate edge zones that have been displaced into the plate interior in the course of the Earth's history. In the case of the New Madrid Seismic Zone, one culprit in particular can be identified, namely the real foot rift. Such a rift occurs when the continental crust is stretched by various causes. Like any relatively brittle material, the crust can break and give way under this tension. A bit like the Earth has cellulite at the site, Except that cellulite does not usually cause earthquakes, but trench fractures do. Incidentally, such intraplate earthquakes are also possible in Europe. The European plate experiences continuous pressure from the northward drifting African plate. Over millions of years, these enormous tectonic plates have lifted the Alps, which continue to grow by a few millimeters every year to this day. This has also created the upper Rhine graben between Germany and France, which has sunk over time and now represents a geological zone of weakness. But now back to the USA. The real foot rift was formed around 750 million years ago 
during the Precambrian. At this geological fault, the stresses from the Pacific Plate in the west meet those from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in the east. And the stretching of the Earth's crust at this point almost led to the continents splitting apart. But the process came to a halt and North America remained intact after all. Imagine that. Almost the entire continent would have broken apart here. And today this rift valley remains like a kind of scar. It's really crazy what forces are at work within the Earth over long periods of time. In fact, the New Madrid quakes are considered to be the most violent intraplate quakes of all time. This geologic cellulite, a uh, zone of weakness, left by this incomplete rifting process is there today, creating potential zones for seismic activity. And so there's some cause for concern now because it could soon be that time again. Brian Houston, professor at the University of Missouri, says, Geologists have predicted when one of these large earthquakes could occur in the New Madrid seismic zone and again. We are overdue for another quake, and models have predicted that if a large earthquake occurs now, it could be a catastrophic event costing billions of dollars to the region. Today, of course, the region is also much more densely populated than it was during the violent earthquakes of the 19th century. So if such a violent quake were to occur again now, it would be a devastating event. And as we have just heard, it is statistically overdue. What scale of destruction should we expect? Large cities like St. Louis and Memphis are in the area of influence of the tectonically active zone. The moment the ground in the region in Memphis begins to shake again with the force of the historic quakes of 18 Uthman, the earth would then crack open beneath the pulsating lights of the city as if suddenly breaking open centuries-old scars. Historic neighborhoods where blues and soul once flourished would be shrouded in chaos of rubble and devastation, and in the landscape around Memphis, the effects would be just as profound. The mighty Mississippi River, which is the lifeline of the region, could be disrupted in its course and become impassable for a long time. Bank reinforcements could give way and large areas of land could be flooded. While in other places, the land sinks or rises, creating new geographical features that redraw the map of this ancient river landscape. This sounds truly apocalyptic and begs the question, when should we expect this to happen? A publication by the United States Geological Survey states, ongoing earthquake activity in the area is compelling evidence that the New Madrid region has a high seismic risk. The preponderance of evidence leads us to conclude that earthquakes in the future can be expected to be as frequent and as severe as in the past four and a half thousand years. So everyone agrees that it will happen at some point. But when exactly? Geologists are finding this extremely difficult because, unlike other earthquake regions, the last major quake in the New Madrid seismic zone was a very, very long time ago, more than 200 years ago. Only rudimentary seismic data is available from that time. There are hundreds of mini quakes in the region every year, but little information can be drawn from them regarding the next big quake. As far as the data is concerned, scientists are therefore somewhat in the dark. This makes accurate predictions extremely difficult. Nevertheless, there are rough estimates. The Geological Survey estimates the chance of experiencing an earthquake similar to the earthquakes of 1811 to 1812 in the next 50 years at around 7-10%. to The chance of experiencing an earthquake of magnitude 6 or greater in 50 years is 25-40%, to and that is no small figure. A 10% chance of experiencing an absolutely devastating quake in a densely populated region in the next 50 years. You better be prepared. As soon as there is anything new about the developments in the New Madrid seismic Zone, I will keep you up to date immediately, but of course this is only possible if you follow my channel. Subscribing is absolutely free, you'll never miss another galactic video, and you'll help me immensely. So everyone subscribe diligently, thank you. Let's change continents and travel to Antarctica. Here too, there is a lot of mystery hidden underground. Many people even claim that there was once a civilization there, long before mankind, and that they left behind pyramids in the eternal ice. I've explained to you in the video below whether this is true and what crazy things are hidden under the eternal ice. Be sure to watch it. And if you want to support my work, you can always visit the online store and get the t-shirts from the videos, real meteorites, and cute plush planets. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.